What's up guys? Back with another video. For those of you, I'm James. I've been making apps and, and mainly in Flutter and I'm trying to document the whole journey. And I just want to show you guys, you know, like the process from start to finish. This is a, a new app that I'm building now. Well, it's not new. So I'm rebuilding one of my old apps and this one is called Intently. It's in the app store now, but I've learned a lot over the years and I just really want to rebuild that app and add some new core features to it that I think could be really useful and helpful. So I just wanted to share the journey with you guys and I built another, a couple of different apps at the same time, but this is the one that I want to just bring you guys along with right now. So it's been like two weeks since my last video. I have been working, I've just been stuck. And it felt weird making a video when I wasn't really making any progress. And I just felt like I had nothing to share. But then I thought about it and I'm like, you know what? I'm trying to share the, the actual whole journey. I'm trying to tell, show you guys how it is to make an app from start to finish. And showing you every week soup a lot of progress is not realistic. Sometimes in software development, you get stuck and it's humbling. I got stuck on something that I've done like 20, 30 different times now, and it's authentication. It's super simple, authentication. I'm doing it with Firebase, so I should have it down. But Apple Auth has been kicking my butt. There's been some updates to the different packages I use, and I think that's messing me up. So yeah, I've just been stuck on Apple Auth for like two weeks now. I don't know why, and it might just be, so the problem that I'm having is it's weird. So like the auth works, it authenticates the user, but whenever they get authenticated, I'm not getting any user data back from Apple. So they'll go through the process, they'll click Apple, they continue, and two things weird are happening. The first one is I don't get that little pop-up that says hide or share email. So that was the first red flag for me. And then next, after I authenticate, I put a breakpoint to see, you know, what I'm getting back. And I get a null email and a null, just all the data for the user. The names are not there. Nothing's there. So I didn't know what, what you know, what the hell. So that's kind of what I've been on. And then, so I've just, yeah, I've been stuck. So what I did then is I was like, okay, I'm just, you know, talking with ChatGPT reading through all the docs, trying to see what changed in the packages. Flutter's documentation is weird because the code is super simplified now to what I have in my old project. But then some articles say that you need the complicated way. Um, but I don't know. Then I found a Stack Overflow post that like blew my mind. Apparently with Apple Auth, the first time the user authenticates, it shares the data with the developer. Meaning, the first time you get the names, the emails, and everything. Any subsequent authentication, you don't get that data. So, I think that's what's happening to me. So once I saw that article, I think that's what's happening because my user is technically authenticated. My email, that is for my real user in the app, because remember this app's already launched is my Apple ID email also. So I'm wondering if the Firebase is getting confused there or like I don't have another Apple ID to test with. So yeah, so once I read that article, I'm like, okay, I need to figure this out. I found out that Firebase has this thing where you can use emulate, like an, a, an, a local version of Firebase, like emulator, I think they call it. So I'm gonna try that to see if, you know, like with a new database, new, no users, will it work? But I took a break. So that takes me to kind of what I wanna talk about today is like the process for me. When I get stuck, what do I do? How do I get out of that rut? So first, I try everything to solve the problem. I, I really try everything to make sure, typically even at work, before I ask for help, I exhaust all options that I can do on my own because I don't want to go ask for help and have someone quickly be like, did you try this? So I make sure I try everything. I typically document what I've tried and what didn't work um, or how far, how close it got me. And then 
after that, after I'm stuck, I, I try to get to a good point to where I at least have a plan forward. For example, with this Apple Auth thing, I was feeling pretty defeated until I saw that Stack Overflow post. And now that gave me an idea, the idea of like, okay, if I create this emulated Firebase environment, I can test to see if the first time through with fresh user, if I get the data that I need. And then that will then that'll set me right. So once I have that plan forward, I have a decision to make. Do I execute that now? You know, or do I take a break and do something else? Sometimes it really depends on mood. I've been feeling not productive for these past two weeks. And it's not like I've just been doing this app. I've been doing my other stuff too, so you know, it's not really two weeks straight on this, but I needed a win. And it sounds dumb, but I just needed a win. I needed something to give me that feeling of like, ah, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know, just a, I needed that little endorphin rush or anything. So I took a break and I switched to a task that I could just get stuff done. One of the things that was needed to be done was I wrote all the code for the authentication that you guys saw in one of my previous videos, but I didn't actually like architect that out. I'm using clean architecture for the app and I wrote all that code using local state. So the last video was really mainly focused on just functionality and getting the screen and widgets looking right, which it did. So today what I was doing and what you've been seeing clips of this whole time is me re-architecturing out that back end. Now the, the like re-architecturing out the whole authentication piece. So I'm using block for the state management and I use clean architecture pattern for you know the back end part piece of it. How does that look? I have a couple videos on clean architecture. Um, I'll link them in the description. They're really helpful. That was one of the things that I've learned these past few years that has just made my projects just feel, the code just feels so much actually cleaner. So you break up, so the, the, the whole point of clean is separation of concerns, just decoupling everything. Each section, they don't know about the other sections of the app. For example, the block does not know about the database, right? The block is my view state management. It does not know about the database. It does not know about all the layers in between there. All it calls is this thing called the use case. The use case is specific to that feature, right? For example, one of my use cases is login with email. So all the block does is say login with email, right? And then in that use case now, I call another layer, which is a repository layer. And that layer is where I can handle some business logic. Like if I need to transform data, Mainly what I use that layer for is to convert from the data object up from Firebase to the object that's gonna be used in my actual view. So the use case will call the repository and then the repository still doesn't know about Firebase. And then the repository calls what's called the data source. And in the data source, that's where my database implementation will be. So the data, data source knows nothing about who's calling it, what, all it does is just execute this function, return data. So why do it like this? It's a lot of files, that's for sure, right? But what it does is it makes it easy to swap things in and out because it also uses abstract classes. So those data sources, there's an abstract class that lays out all of the methods that are needed. And the repo just calls the method. It's not calling like a specific file or anything. It's calling this method for this data source. So let's say I want to swap Firebase for Superbase, right? In my old apps where Firebase was mixed into the blocks and just used everywhere, that would be a huge lift. But with clean architecture, it's just the data source implementations that would need to change. Nothing else would need to change. And that's what makes it really nice. It's like you can swap out components without having to break the whole app. But yeah, I mean, this wasn't supposed to be a clean tutorial. I just kind of wanted to share you guys like 
what happens when I'm stuck. And in software development, you're not always like coding, 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 coding. Sometimes you just get beat down and you just need to research and you need to read docs. And then sometimes you just need to switch off for a little bit, get a win and then go back in. And the getting a win part isn't so much important. The, the big part is just stepping away from the problem to let your brain just, you know, come back to it later, fresh, and you can have new ideas. But yeah, that's where I'm at with this app. Again, it's called Intently. It's the personal CRM, probably should have said this at the beginning, but just helps you keep track of like your relationships with your friends and your family and whoever. Um, yeah, check out the other videos on it if you want to see how it started. I'm hoping to really make progress on this this week. Uh, I might make a video covering that Firebase emulation and finishing the auth piece. Um, if you guys are interested, comment that you want to see that. Otherwise, the next video will hopefully be me working on the core functionality of the app, adding people and probably the, the person view. I can't see myself having a lot of problems building that. So uh, hopefully we'll see what happens. But yeah, thanks for tuning in again, guys. Sorry for the delay. I'm gonna try to. I'm still trying to be consistent with recording, but again, I was just stuck this week. So, yeah, like and subscribe, comment. It helps a lot. Um, yeah, stay tuned for more.